Welcome to Biz Around Town, the show that discovers local businesses in and around Waterford Township. Today we're in front of Joe's Army Navy Surplus and located at 981 West Huron and we will be visiting with the third generation owner and president, Jeff Goldsmith. Joe's Army Navy has been serving the Metro Detroit area since 1946. Joe's Army Navy is your outfitter for tactical gear, camping and prepper supplies, workwear, work shoes, military surplus, and more. Follow me as we journey through the aisles where the merchandise is unique, functional, and trendy. I'm here with President and Owner Jeff Goldsmith at Joe's Army Navy Surplus. Um, as you know, Jeff, the, the merchandise in this store is, is nothing like you find in the big box that's true. You know, stores. That's true. That's always been our goal is to yeah. have stuff that you can't find everywhere else. And that's how you differentiate yourself. And, yeah. then, and when I walk through the store, I'm just amazed at the things that you have. That's and the way, I like like to you, what, the, the way I like to describe you, and I think that's maybe the areas we can visit, is basically functional. Yeah. Right? Practical, functional, unique, yeah, and trendy. Our job—it's my job to find stuff. It's your job to figure out what to do with it. Yeah. So, so let's take look a look. At. And I know one of the things is you're a big prepper store, and I don't know how many people know about what a prepper store is and what that really means. But I'm going to let you kind of sure. walk us through it all, if that works for you. Yeah. Okay. So we were actually a prepper store before there was such a thing as a prepper. Um, and what prepping means is being prepared for whatever comes up, whether it's a power outage, whether it's um, a breakdown of society or whatever. Um, but prepping has been around for a number of years since probably Y2K, but our types of stores have always had the types of supplies that people have need for that type of thing. Um, things, you know, like we're over here, the different types of foods that people would need for an emergency situation. Um, we have the military MREs, uh, we even have One's from the U.S. We also have them from France now. Um, and a lot of time when you saw these foods, you would think space. Like you would think like astronauts, or you would think. Yeah. You know, I know growing up as a kid, and I was introduced to packaged foods and dried foods and stuff. That was usually because it was something to do with with. It know. was primarily for backpacking yeah. and such, and we have those as well. So people will use the backpacking food as one aspect of their prepping kit. The nice thing about these, they're, they're very lightweight, um, they only require water to be rehydrated, um, and then off you go. Uh, with the MREs from the military, those are ready to eat. So once you open up an MRE, there's a number of different parts and pieces inside, and you've got enough for one person for one meal. So you don't even need water? No, there's no water, water required. Or anything. Nope. So really, the, it's, for camping, the, the difference too would be this, you know you're going to have water. But for a, an, Correct. An, an, an situation, emergency situation, exactly. You probably are not going to have water. You may not. You know, or um, you may have contaminated water. Exactly. Which is, I think, you have some supplies for even contaminated yep. water. Yeah. Right? So if Let's you have contaminated water, um, there's a number of options for contaminated water. Um, easy, simple oh, wow. um, straws. Um, this one's made by Life Straw. Um, it's probably one of the most well-known that's out there. Um, basically, you open the bottom, you open the top, stick it in the water, and drink. And as long as water is flowing through it, it's clean. Um, I would imagine some people just buy these just for everyday life. I, I don't know. Sometimes some it depends on what are, situation they get into. Yeah. But we sell a lot of them. Th this is probably the most popular one for go bags. Uh huh. And a go bag would be a bag that someone has ready. You know, all they do is pick it up and go. So, so you, that's the thing that you kind of call the a bug out bag. Bug out bag, a bug exactly. Out bag. A go okay. bag, bug out bag, exactly. Okay, and is that different than a tactical bag per se, or would they be? Not necessarily. I mean, a tactical synonymous. bag is the bag itself. A okay. go bag is one that has all of your gear in it. Let's let's go look at the tactical bags and let's sure. the, the, and then discuss what you would put in it as a go bag. Sure. That would be. 
because there's going to be things that you and that, like myself, I would never even think about. Right, and, and if you, it, it's hard to when you're trying to do a whole overview, yeah. and you're trying to think, you know, food, light, heat, shelter, blah blah blah. It, right. it gets overwhelming. So yeah. when you break it down into smaller pieces, um, it makes it much easier. So a go bag or a tactical bag or a um, a bug out bag can be a lot of different sizes. Um, it's going to depend on the person. Is so, this heavy? Let me see how heavy it is. So you would not be able to carry a huge monster bag like this with a hundred pounds on no. it. Um, so <laughs> again, a lot of it is person specific. Yeah. And it's also person specific for the types of things that they want to have in there. To put in there. Correct. Um, in Michigan, unfortunately, we have two two seasons. We do have winter. So right. your bag has to change depending on the season. the season. If you're out in California, you're somewhere in a warm climate, you exactly. don't have to have all that heavy gear, right. which is, would make Correct. a big difference. Correct. But um, there's lots and lots of options um, when it comes to the actual bag. Um, there is no one right. perfect bag. It's really all depends on what the person wants to carry. Um, and then when you start breaking it down, so things like food. Mm -hmm. We've kind of already discussed it. We've, you know, you've got MREs, you've got freeze dried, you have the um, emergency bars, okay. like you would see in lifeboats. Um, these are real popular for. These are real popular for for bug out bags and go bags. Okay. So these were actually designed for lifeboats. So if you were in a situation where you're on the ocean and you needed food and water. This is what typically will be in the pack. Wow, five year shelf life. Right, and what you've got, so the government considers 1,200 calories enough food for one person for one day. Right, um, and if you want to lose a pound of meat. Right, <laughs> but and again, in an emergency situation, you're happy to have right, anything. you're happy to have food. And you'll notice that both of these, this is 1,200 calories, this is 3,600 calories, they're broken into individual okay. squares. Yeah. So this one has four individual 300 calorie squares. Okay. Um, so you, if you're in a situation, you can monitor your caloric you intake. You can ration. Exactly. exactly. Which is why they say rations, right? Right. This so. one has nine um, 400 calorie squares. Okay. So, so they, this is one person three days, three person three people one day. Okay. Um, you can also get the same thing. You can get the packets of water. This would be what would be in the emergency kits okay. for water. Um, how much how much water would they say that you need to have to stay hydrated? I'm not the like, expert on that, okay. but I would expect it's I mean, it probably wants, close to a gallon a day. Yeah, um, I'd have to look that up. Um, so again, these type of things are all parts of people's food kits. Those are heaters. Yeah. So in one of the military MREs is all this stuff up here. So oh. you have. A main course, you have a side dish, you have desserts. The, by the way, the brownies are fabulous. Really? Um, you have cheese or peanut butter, you have crackers, you have drinks, um, snacks, candy. So they call it a meal ready to eat because it is literally ready to eat. You do not have to heat it up. So inside of this box will be a pack that looks like this. Okay. And so this particular one is Asian beef strips. So it's ready to eat. You can mm -hmm. open this up and eat it. Mm -hmm. or it comes with a heater and you can actually heat it heat up. the food up. Yes. So there's that, I mean, obviously you're not getting electricity, so what do you Right, so this it's one. Kind of like the hand warmer things? Similar. Okay. Um, you actually put water in this uh -huh. and then the reaction to the chemical that's in there will actually heat it okay. up. Um, it gets very, very, very hot. So you have to be careful with that. So when it, so that's one aspect of, of you prepping. talking about lighting? Yeah. Um, that, that's something you'd probably put in the bag as well. Right? Exactly. Um, whether it's a headlamp, whether it's a small uh, lantern, you know, just something so that if it's nighttime, mm -hmm. you know, you have a way to see. Okay. Um, are these flashlights? Solar or are they, no, are these they, are LED for battery. Oh, the LED lasts a long time nowadays, so. Yes, but it requires batteries. You have to carry extra batteries, which yeah. requires weight. Um, there's a number of different types of solar. Uh -huh. um, chargers that are out there. Okay. Uh, this one's actually kind of neat. It runs on salt water. Um, oh. You literally just put salt and water down in the bottom and the reaction to it will power it. Um, 
So there's candle lanterns. I mean, there's lots of different options. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with cooking. How are you going to heat your? How are you going to heat things up if you're going to heat them up? Uh, there's small trail stoves. There's butane stoves. This uh, is a stove. Yeah. <laughs> so if it wasn't locked up, I could kind of show you, but it actually will work similar to this one. Okay. So this, the burner. Can you hold that? Yep. So the burner would actually fit on top of this butane cartridge. Okay. And then. All you do, it's just like your barbecue. You turn on the gas, light it, put your pot on top, wow. and it'll boil the water, and, and or heat up your food or whatever mm -hmm. that you're eating. So you've kind of you've got food, you've got light, um, you've got whether you need shelter. You know, there's some small like little pup tents or tarps. Mm -hmm. um, or if you're going to carry a firearm or ammunition, you know that's one other aspect. Right. Um, but the biggies are are really our food, water, food, water, and shelter, shelter, and, light. and yep. Um, and these are, I mean, even though we're talking about the, the bug out bags, I mean, yeah. this is great camping stuff. Yeah. I know, because yeah. I mean, my, a lot of my family, my kids all do the, you know, hike in, hike out. Yeah. You know, and they're always trying to keep their, their backpacks as light as possible. Exactly. And that's so. kind of where a lot of it came from was the backpacking mm -hmm. area. Um, you know, they were always looking for lighter, better. And now lighter, better is working just as well for people that are out and about. It makes sense. One of the other things is uh, first aid. Yeah. Um, whether it's for uh, bug out purposes or just in the home or in the car, um, a lot of people will use their bug out bag as kind of their in their car, mm -hmm. and it's called. Then it becomes what they call a get home bag. Mm -hmm. So if you're stuck out in the middle of nowhere, you grab your bag and at least it has enough stuff to get you home. Now do these have like flares in them and that too. These don't that? have flares. These okay, are more the medical. More first aid. Okay. Right. So these are more medical. Okay. Um, Lots of different things. My, my personal opinion is find a size that you like, mm -hmm. and then what, depending on what's in there, you can always supplement it. So, so what kinds of things are? Oh, there's typically there will be bandages, there'll be dressings, there'll be gloves. Um, some will have CPR kits. Um, you can get them mm -hmm. all the way up to, um, like, this particular one is designed for a gunshot trauma. Okay. So you've got bleed stop bandages, you've got chest seals, you've got quick clot. Um, this would be something that, like, you might take, put on your range bag, mm -hmm. um, and have ready for something like that. Uh, but again, there's lots and lots and lots of options, um, and then you can also supplement. Again, we have These there's different kinds of bandages. There's nasal pharyngeal airways. Tourniquets have become very, very popular lately. Um, Beaumont just did a whole class right. on how to use a tourniquet. Uh -huh. um, and so tourniquets have become very, very, po not popular is probably the wrong word, but they but become, a lot of people are now know about them and are looking for them. Um, and we have a few different styles, whether it's the Marine Corps uh, TK4 or the Army, uh, what they call a Cat 5 uh -huh. tourniquet. But that's definitely something that you should have. Any, everybody should have a first aid kit, whether you know for whatever purposes. I even see a snake bite kit over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah not as big for not Michigan. as big here, right? No. But Arizona. Exactly. Or, yeah. So. Exactly. Um, you know, little things like, you know, just an auto tool, mm -hmm. basically seatbelt cutter, glass break, oh, and then okay. a small hammer. Oh wow. Um, also a great thing to have in the car. You know, we we've been selling. You know, this is a, one of those silly little items. Mm -hmm. You know, these little space blankets. Emergency blanket. Exactly. Yeah. Again, this becomes your shelter. This becomes a way to keep yourself warm. Um, but this this has been an Army Navy store staple for you know 30 years. Wow. You know, a lot of this stuff, it's just our products. I mean, this is what we do. You know, it's funny. I'm looking at all this. This is where I'm saying functional and practical. Exactly. And exactly. I mean, this sounds silly, but I you know. <laughs> Christmas stockings. This is yeah. the stuff that should go in Christmas stockings, yeah. right? I mean, it's just, I mean, you need it for all the time, but I was just kind of giggling to myself because I'm always looking for functional, practical things. And that's kind of been our goal. So, like you said, functional, practical. Um, and unique. For holiday, yeah. right. And, and holiday, it's a lot of, we sell a tremendous amount of cold weather gear. Yeah. So, a lot of presents now are Carhartt, like cold weather clothing. Mm -hmm. Socks are a huge present. Yeah. Um, we have, you know, hundred different types of winter socks, uh, winter boots, winter gloves, winter Do we hats. want to walk over to that area? We can go wherever Let's you, that. wherever Let's you go like. Let's go ahead and walk over there. Yeah. I don't know what, I, if we turn our head though, we might get yeah. <laughs> sidelined. There's a lot, of, there's a lot, a lot of but we can make our way back, right? Sure. Okay. So, so when, again, I don't have our winter socks out now, but it's right. more of the summer hiking and outdoor socks. Um, 
And socks have become kind of technical now. It used to be just a sock was a sock was a sock. Now um, things are more wicking. Uh, you have merino wool. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to be sitting in your own sweat. It, they all wick. Um, there's different thicknesses. There's different all different kinds of things now. So what, what, what I know that that's a big thing for hiking too is to get the wicking socks. Yes. Um, what? I mean, how are they made differently than the normal cotton sock, or what? Well, is first it just thing, the fabric is just a different fabric, or exactly, it can be the fabric and it can be the weave. Okay. Um, cotton socks are great; they're mm -hmm. very comfortable. They work wonderfully in the summer, um, but in a winter situation, there's a big saying called "cotton kills," mm -hmm. and when cotton gets wet, it stays wet. It doesn't dry out, and it keeps that moisture laying on the skin. Um, so. In the winter, if you're wearing a cotton sock, you could have the greatest boot in the world, but if your feet are sweating, that right. moisture stays there and you get that cold, just clammy feeling because the cold just gets into that moisture. Mm -hmm. So having a good sock that wicks will help you um, stay dry right. and help you stay warm because you're dry. Again, knows if you're out, I mean, I've been out on the lake just hiking on the lake or snowshoeing on the lake and when exactly. your feet get wet. I mean, it's you're miserable. Mis it's miserable. You're yes. miserable. So yeah. this is. And if you're snowshoeing, you're you're yeah. pumping a lot of blood. You're pushing a lot of. Uh, you're pumping a lot of blood. Your your heart rate is up. Yep. You don't need super thick monster wool socks. You just need something so that when you stop, you're not sitting in your own sweat and you're getting cold mm -hmm. because of that. And so, so there's also clothing that does. Yeah. That yes. You have the. Yes. Wicking clothing and what have you. Yeah. There's military. Um, we have military types of clothing that do that. Um, Lots of different options. I mean, in the summer, it's all kinds of, you know, there's shorts. Yeah, we're summer now. Right. So, so the, the, merchandise the merchandise changes merchandise over. You won't have. One of the <laughs> fastest growing areas, and I know it's going to be silly, but is yeah. all this. Well, it's not only camouflage, it's, it's, the, it's the fashion colors. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, that's where we come in when I said you're trendy. Right. I mean, somebody's going to go to, um, I mean, I, I hate to say it, I'm not going to name any other big back stores. Or big, oh, you know, I know who, they, I know who they, you're going to name, they, and they, they charge four times as much exactly. as Exactly. Yeah. Why not come here and get Ex four times thing. as many, it's yep. for that matter. Yep. You know, especially the, the, the families and with the kids that are, that are really wanting this stuff. It's yeah. like. We're a fun is, store for kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kids seem to, you know, really like us. The, the store itself. There's all kinds of things up in the air. Yeah, there's the we'll big take, guns. That's there's, the unique stuff we're going right. to look at, too. And then but. we have all the kids, you know, the kids' clothing. We're the last bastion of politically incorrect toys in the, you know, in the world with all the different kind of military-type uh, toys and things. Um, we still do a lot of military surplus, but that's getting a little harder to find, so we're always looking for things to supplement uh -huh. with. I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with a nice little cowboy gun for Johnny. I don't either, <laughs> but you know, in today's climate, know. you know, you it's have to be very cognizant of what of, what exactly. the world is like nowadays. What you teach them. So, actually, I remember when we did that, the, the cash mob and came here, and our township supervisor, his little grandson, was oh. with them, and he had to get a, yeah. a, ta a jacket. He yeah. He had to get an army jacket. So. Um, and I even see like cuts up there. And yeah, well, actually, those are stretchers. Those are stretchers. Oh. Yeah, those yeah. are stretchers. We do okay. have cuts, but have we cuts have pea coats. And okay. again, we don't normally coats. keep them on the Which floor right now, but in the fall, that's, you know, those are U.S. made, um, as close to the military you, as you can get. And we're, again, one of the last places that carry authentic. It's not gear. easy to find pea coats anymore, I don't think. There's a lot of fashion coats out yeah. there that you can spend three or four hundred dollars on. These uh -huh. are U.S. made, and you know they're quite a bit less than that. Really? Yes, and it's made exactly to the military specs. And you, you were talking about um, grunt style. Yeah. Well, yeah. there were those jackets. The jacket that was that a grunt style jacket? I think it was. Oh no, no, that was, was over here. Yeah, a soft shell. Yeah. So the soft shells have, have really taken over for that transitional piece right um, so you've got a, a garment that's it's not waterproof it's very highly water repellent um, but the wind can't get through it uh, this particular one has been one of the more popular ones for us they, they call it a tactical soft shell so you have you know you have pit zips if you start to overheat uh -huh. you've got pockets and then you have pockets within pockets um, you have places for morale patches which are very very popular right now um, so the, the patch actually just 
sticks on yeah. there? Yeah, so the Velcro, anytime you see Velcro like this, uh -huh. it's for morale patches. I didn't and we can that. show you what, what those what are. are. Yeah, they're so very, very popular. This kind is a, a duplicate of, you said that what started this was what, police or military? Was this a yeah, military? Yeah, it was a military type of garment, okay. yes. Yeah. And then it's kind of become trendy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and kind of a staple for us. Well, yeah. It's kind of nice looking. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it really it, it's is. just, and the way it's cut, it's not a fashion cut, so it's not real loose. It's, uh -huh. it's actually a kind of a tactical cut where it's fitted. Um, lots of different colors, yeah. you know, lots of different options. And you call them morale patches? Morale patches would be the types of things that go so on what, here. So what's a, a morale patch? <clears throat> so a morale patch, oh. and you'll have to excuse us because some of them are kind of body. <clears throat> so all of these are morale patches. Um, so it started as kind of an offshoot of the military patches mm -hmm. that they would wear for their units and things. Mm -hmm. um, but there's millions and millions of patches out there. Uh, so, and if you don't have it in stock, do you, can you, do you have like books where they can order what they want, or some, do you pretty much just basically what happens is we'll keep we'll we'll keep all of these, and then three months later we'll drop thirty and bring okay. in thirty new, bring ones. In new ones. Because what's happening is people all well, what's new? I already own all of these. Yeah. What's new? Um, and unfortunately, you won't, some of the ones that are more the most popular are the ones that are the the the. Uh, Kind more, of the most uh, more provocative. Yes, that's yeah, a best. That's, that's a, a very word. that's a very good way to say it. Yes. You know, I don't think there's any way around that anymore. So no, it's all no. right. But the flags are always, you know, the flags are probably always the mo one of the most popular things. Um, Blue Line uh, products are absolutely um, red hot right now. Um, yeah, supporting the that, police. Yeah, back over by the uh, grunt yeah. shirts. So now, not only is there blue line for police, there's red line for fire, there's okay. green for forest service and military. Um, there's going to be a lot of, you're going to see a lot of different um, flags out there. So, again, you'll see things with the blue line here or the red line. This one actually is red and blue uh, for both um, police, police and fire. Okay. Um, but that's incredibly popular. Uh, and that's kind of, again, a staple of ours. We do a lot of security. We sell a lot of security guard items. So basically, a lot of patriotic. also, I mean, if somebody, it's, it's workplace gear too. I mean, yeah, I mean, not hardcore like, work gear, right. not like dicky work pants, but okay. kind of more. Um, the guy that needs something a little bit dressier than a dicky, but still mm -hmm. something that's going to be functional and comfortable. Right. It would be the way I would kind of describe it. Now we were looking at these red line and the blue line shirts. You also have um, some wearables that the grunt wear. Grunt style. Grunt style. So yeah. one of the hottest lines in the country right now is a company called Grunt Style. Um, they started. It's a it's a veteran owned uh, company. They started with a few T-shirts, basically flag with their Grunt Style logo. Um, now they have like 100 or 200 different styles of shirts. We carry about 30, 35 of them. Uh -huh. Again, lots of different uh, patriotic wear, um, different types of sayings. Um, this was one of the earliest ones. I never understood it, but I, you know. Throat punch donor. Yeah. Um, it just Cool, yeah, right? and then probably the most popular of all of the shirts from them is this one. So this is the, they call it a blank check. It says, it says veteran on the front, uh -huh. but more importantly, this is, you know, it says the blank check. A blank check payable to United States of America for an American right. up to and including one's life. Right. That's pretty impactful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's probably been one of the most popular. Um, but there's and then there's a lot of other again kind of more uh, body shirts that uh, people really really seem to like. Again, one of our strengths is our you know true work boot area. So these are more the hiking boots here. Yeah, more hikers. Now again, um, I'm not, are there women's? Or, oh yeah, we've got. Yeah, women's. we have women's yep. and men's. Um, we don't do super high end. It's uh -huh. primarily for those people that are doing a lot of uh, day trips okay. or just starting out. Um, but when it comes to workwear. You know, we have a lot of different things covered. Those ones she's looking at right now are made in USA. Mm -hmm. um, but lots of, you know, safety toe, uh, tree climbers. You know, these are all meant for people that are outdoors and working. Uh, not a, we don't do a lot of uh, business with 
um, like the line, like okay. guys working in plants where they yeah. need more of a lower shoe. But so what's the difference between like a steel-toed boot and, and that one says composite toe? Okay, Is good question. Yeah, so a, a steel toe was the original safety toes that were out there, and they were literally made out of steel. Um, now, with the different uh, types of products that are out there, you have what's called a composite toe. Yeah, and a composite one. toe gives you the same uh, protection as a oh, yeah. steel toe, but it's quite a bit less weight. Um, and the other it's thing is, light, yeah. yeah, the other thing is a comp toe won't set off metal detectors. Okay. So in certain occupations where you're going in and out of a courthouse or you're going in and out of uh, places that require um, screening, mm -hmm. it, this won't set off okay. the alarms. So. You there's no there's no metal pieces on and it's not a bad looking shoe either <laughs> no i mean more more important than looks although yeah. look is very important is comfort right. um, and work boots now used to be those monster heavy yeah. you know took you a year to break them in now everything is is much lighter weight much more comfort comfort oriented um, and that goes even all the way to even boots that you know real super heavy like these right they're still made the insoles if i pull it out the insoles are designed for comfort in mind. They're designed for people that are going to be on their feet, you know, eight, nine, ten hours a day. Mm -hmm. And that's always been a strength of ours. All the footwear has Let's been a strength of Let's take a quick look at some of the unique things that you have hanging. I know you talked about maybe sometime having like a museum around the exhibition. That's my, that, that would be my goal, yeah. We, we have a lot of stuff stashed. Left, so yeah. I want to make sure we touch on that. And some of the unique things that are hanging here. Um, I mean, all the different things that my father and I have collected over the years, you know, oversized 50 cal machine gun, uh, 1918, this is a 1918 German water-cooled machine gun, uh, all the different munitions and things. You know, it's a fun store to walk around because right. there's all kinds of cool stuff. But some of the other things that we were, you know, my dad has done just to make us different than the big boxes, you know, where else do you see a 30 foot, you know, snakeskin on the wall? All right, and how long has that been there? Uh, we moved in in 84, so it's uh -huh. been there since probably 86. And so, because I read on your website, you've actually been in existence since 46. Yes, the right. store was originally downtown Pontiac, yeah. uh, 19 North Saginaw, okay. from uh, 46. 80, 84 in this location. Yeah, my dad bought the business in 72. He moved here in 84, and I started with him in 85. Okay. You know, my dad yeah. found that at a garage sale, and uh, he brought it, and I think it speaks for itself. I think it has a nice mess. Mess Yeah, shoplifters get eaten. There's yep. get eaten. Yeah. <laughs> We've got, uh, here's Joe, this is Joe. That's Joe. So. Is that a real harmonica? No. No, it's no. A, okay. it was a uh, display for the company. Kinda, where did he find that? He actually he had, found he found that, yeah. A yeah, uh, gentleman named Dave Ivey did all the, um, the sculptures. They're all wow. foam. And then it's just different parts and pieces. I found like the two, these are newer for us, the World War II uniforms, the green right there and the khaki, those are World War II. So actually, uh, if you walk around the store if, and you turn your head any which way, there's always going to be some unique There's always something to see. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of what we really go for, is something different that you don't see at every other place. You know, we're kind of like a cross between, there's really no there description is, for us no. anymore. And, and, you know, because I mean, I always talk about this. We don't have just one area in our town right. where everything's located. So I think it's really important that we do these shows, yeah. so that people can see what we really do and the unique things that we have here. Yeah, and it's hard town. to you know, Army Navy stores have a denotation. Older uh, people may have one type of a uh, thought of what it's in there. Young people have no idea what's in an Army Navy right. store anymore, and this is a great way for us to uh, to tell you. Well, hopefully now that they've seen this, they're going to come visit. We we'll would get hope. This running and, and we'll be here for them. It. It's been a lot of fun. I yeah. appreciate it. That's no, my pleasure. Thank you. And uh, what's your, you have a website? Yeah, Joe's Army Navy Online dot com. Okay. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.